It's no secret that the Midwest has been crazy about lifts lately, so today I wanted to examine some fun, historic, and interesting lifts across the Midwest that you can still ride today. Well, not like today, I mean this, this season, like when we have snow this winter. Just roll the intro. What's going on Midwest skiers and riders? Matthew Zransky with MidwestSkiers.com and today we're talking about ski lifts. There has been so much going on with all these new chairlifts going in, I thought it would be fun to look at some of the awesome lifts we already have in place. So let's dive into five unique, historic, and interesting Midwestern lifts that you can still ride as of the 2022-23 season. Number one and definitely the most historic on this list, the Hemlock Chair. This double chairlift that actually started as a single chairlift, but more on that in a minute, is located at Boyne Mountain in Boyne Falls, Michigan, a hill that is full of chairlift history. Believe it or not, this chairlift is actually the world's first chairlift that was built and installed at Sun Valley Resort back in 1936, and we've actually done a full video covering that story, so be sure to check out that one if you haven't already, we'll drop a link below. But how it got to Michigan is also a fun story. The ski legend and one of the founders of Boyne Mountain, Everett Kersher, began going out to Sun Valley for annual ski trips starting back in 1938. During his first trip out, Everett was introduced to Victor Gottschalk, Everett's very first ski instructor. Little did Victor know, however, that several years later he would end up working for Everett and would become a critical element into Boyne acquiring the world's first chairlift. Flash forward and after several years of instructing Everett during his annual trips to Sun Valley, Everett offered Victor a job to help him lay out runs and be the head instructor at his new ski area in Michigan. When Victor overheard Everett discussing plans on installing a rope tow system, he immediately tipped them off about some changes happening at Sun Valley and thought that they might have a used chairlift for sale. Almost immediately, Everett reached out to Sun Valley with an offer and in the summer of 1947, Victor went down to Sun Valley to dismantle the single person chairlift. He would load the lift, wooden telephone poles, bolts, and terminals on a flatbed railroad car and ship it back to Boyne Falls. This would also mark one of the first times a chairlift had been dismantled and relocated to a new hill in lift history. The chairlift would see its first passengers for Boyne's first season in 1948, and it would also mark the first chairlift ever installed in the Midwest. Over the years, the Hemlock chair would receive a number of upgrades and improvements, including double chairs that would replace the original singles, but the upper and lower terminals are still the original from Sun Valley. So next time you are over at Boyne Mountain, make sure you take a ride on this historic lift. Number two, Powder Ridge's J-Bar. Across the Midwest, you will see a lot of different types of ski lifts, but you will only see a J-Bar at Powder Ridge in Kimball, Minnesota. That's because this J-Bar is the last one left in operation across the Midwest and one of only a handful left in the country. The J-Bar is a mostly forgotten ski lift that uses an overhead haul rope and J-shaped carriers to guide skiers and snowboarders up the hill. The first J-Bar was installed in Switzerland for the 1934-35 season and news of this new type of lift spread quickly to lift manufacturers in the United States such as Fred Papps Jr. who went to work copying the design. Powder Ridge's J-Bar, which was installed for the 1973 season, was designed and built by Borvig and has been a staple in the beginners area ever since. Although the J-Bar is slower than its older brother, the Rope Toe, there is definitely something special about riding this type of lift, and others seem to agree. Although a Rope Toe sits less than 200 feet away, most of the crowds at Powder Ridge head for that J-Bar. This is a lift that I always make a point of riding when I'm at Powder Ridge, and without fail will always put a smile on my face, so be sure to check this one out. Number three, and this is actually a two for one squared, because it's a pair of up and over double chairlifts at Little Switzerland in Slinger, Wisconsin. These chairlifts are the hill's only chairlifts and are labeled 1 slash 2 and 3 slash 4. And if you're not familiar with up and over chairlifts, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Although the Midwest does have four of them, 
they are a pretty rare design with less than 10 of them across the country. Up and over lifts were designed as a way to cut costs and space by creating two lifts using a single haul line. Instead of a chairlift stopping and circling back at the top of the hill, it continues on to the back side of the hill to another loading terminal, hence creating another chairlift. The cost and space savings have their advantages, but these type of lifts can only be installed on hills that have a layout to support them, such as Little Switzerland. Little Switzerland's up and over chairlifts were designed and built by Riblet, with the first lift 1-2 being installed in 1964 and 3-4 in 1971. And after doing some research, 1-2 could actually be one of the first up and over chairlifts ever installed. Both myself and Peter Landsman over at liftblog.com were unable to find any other up and over style lifts that predate this one. Pretty cool. And although both of these lifts are getting up there in age, prior to reopening the ski area in 2012, brothers Rick and Mike Schmitz completely overhauled both of them, top to bottom, to ensure that they could stick around for as many years as possible. But it will be interesting to see what they decide to do when they need to be replaced. Could we see some modern day up and over quads? Only time will tell. Any way you cut it, these are some historic and super unique lifts that fit the hill's layout and design perfectly and are definitely worth a visit. Number four, Buck Hills Magic Carpet in Burnsville, Minnesota. And I know what you might be thinking, what is so special about a magic carpet? Well, this magic carpet at the time of installation was the longest carpet in the country. Installed for the 2008-2009 season, this carpet replaced two previous lifts, a rope toe and a J-bar. When planning the install, management had the option to create two separate carpets to account for the flattening of the land and the run that is now called Little Jibber, but why would you do that when you could just go straight over these elements? So instead, they opted to spend the extra money to build a 320-foot precast concrete bridge to extend the carpet to be nearly 800 feet long. The bridge crosses over Little Jibber and features a fiberglass canopy that was built by Magic Carpet. This created a carpet that is extremely memorable not only for its size, but because riders are taken through a covered bridge. Although the title of the nation's longest carpet has since been claimed by another resort, given its length, layout, and covered bridge, this is a really unique lift that children and beginners really enjoy. Bonus because you can also drink two beers on it. And number five, the Summit Express Gondola, or gondola, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And yes, both are actually correct. And a little bit of a side question, how do you pronounce it? Do you pronounce it gondola or gondola? Drop it in the comments below. But this lift is located at Lutzen Mountains in Lutzen, Minnesota, and is the Midwest's only gondola. Although the lift is used to move people from one mountain to another instead of lift access skiing, it offers up some amazing views of the surrounding landscape and Lake Superior. Installed in 2015 by Doppelmeyer, this eight-person gondola has a run length of almost 4,900 feet, making it the longest lift in the Midwest. This new gondola replaced the original which was a PHB hall that was first installed at Loon Mountain in New Hampshire back in 1966. In 1988 it was relocated to Lutzen and saw its first passengers at this location in 1989. When the lift was replaced in 2015 some of the original cabins were sold to the public so if you're lucky enough you might even catch a glimpse of one of these around the region. But if not, you can always check out the one that is mounted on the wall of Papa Charlie's. Not only is the new gondola more spacious for its riders, but it also greatly increased rider capacity, making it quicker, easier, and smoother to ride back and forth to Moose Mountain. This ski lift is a must hit if you're at Lutzen Mountains, and if you're looking for something to do during the off season, taking a sightseeing ride on this lift in the fall will offer up some stunning views. But there you guys have it, five unique ski lifts across the Midwest. Huge shout out to LiftBlog for helping me throw this piece together. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to our channel. But until next time, I hope all of you guys have a great week. Pray for snow and I'll see you guys out there.